All right, we got our masks off. We are all set, socially distanced. I'm really excited to be here with you guys this morning. Thank you guys uh, so much for trying something new with us. Um, I just wanted to say hello to everybody online who is gathering with us, whether you're watching live or watching later and interacting with us on our YouTube channel. Uh, would love for you to be able to interact and um, be able to share anything that connects with you. And really the heart of, of all of us today is we've really been thinking about and, and praying through, hey, how could we help serve our church family and our Rochester community to help uh, people fall more in love with Jesus and specifically help walk through this season in time? And we've been in a series of talks that Pastor Bob has been leading us called Always Better. And with God, it is not always easier, but it is always better. Amen? Amen. And feel free, if you hear something good this morning, don't be afraid to say it a little amen or a little clap or, or something along those lines. We want you to be able to participate as well. So before we get into our passage reading this morning, which will be on the screen for you, I just wanted to have our fantastic and beautiful panelists, beautiful and handsome, sorry, bro. Um, <laughs> I wanted to have you guys just introduce yourselves real quick. Uh, we'll do really, really quick name and occupation. Good morning, everyone. I'm Nancy Longabaugh, and I'm a mental health therapist. I'm Isaiah Lewis, and I'm currently a student assistant to the diversity and equity programs at Roberts Wesleyan College. My name is Sarah Sigmund, and I'm married to Jonathan, which is why we can sit on the same couch. Um, we have two kids, and I'm a public school teacher. Awesome. Well, thank you, guys. Um, so the, the verse that we've been looking at all together has been found in Ephesians chapter 3, uh, verse number 20. And here's what it says. I'm going I'm to stand up for a minute because i got to get it going here for a sec. Okay, here's what it says. It says, Now to him, referring to God, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. God is able to do immeasurably more than you can think about or dream about or hope for. That's a good word for this season, amen? So for us, what we're going to do, though, is actually jump back in Scripture to an Old Testament book in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verses 17 through 23. Again, this will be on the screen for you. And this is the passage that we're going to kind of break down together and for our discussion. So... If you'll put your attention uh, to the word of God, it says this. You may say to yourselves, these nations are stronger than we are. How can we drive them out? But do not be afraid of them. Remember well what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all Egypt. You saw with your own eyes the great trials, the miraculous signs and wonders, the mighty hand and outstretched arm with which the Lord your God brought you out. The Lord your God will do the same to all the peoples you now fear. Moreover, the Lord your God will send the hornet among them until even the survivors who hide from you have perished. Do not be terrified by them, for the Lord your God, who is among you, is a great and awesome God. The Lord your God will drive out those nations before you little by little. You will not be allowed to eliminate them all at once, or the wild animals will multiply around you. But the Lord your God will deliver them over to you, throwing them into great confusion until they are destroyed. So here's the thing, is this passage is talking about um, nations coming, surrounding, and they're feeling like, man, the enemies are, uh, my enemies are coming and surrounding, and, and they're about to win the day. And so these people are crying out to God, wondering, what are we going to do? And for you right now, maybe your greatest fear isn't um, an external country coming um, to invade your home. But maybe for you, there are some enemies or there are some hardships that you have been walking through. Even as we were gathering, we, we started talking and praying for, for the needs um, that are happening in our community. So many of us are struggling. And so for today, I just want to start by asking our panelists today, what does this passage say to you? How, how does it help us here today? Because, And I want you to think about specifically our church family. Maybe they're dealing with depression or isolation, or maybe they're in a really good season too. But could you break it down for us what this passage means? 
Yeah, I think for me, um, you know, I think the reality of it is that everybody's dealing with something, whether you can see it externally or not, whether they talk about it or not, people are dealing with things. And I think um, it, would, it wouldn't be wise for us to say we came into church today not bringing any baggage with us. You know, whether, like you said, it be anxiety or depression or you're just overwhelmed with life, I think um, we're all going through something. And I think the, the part of the passage that sticks out to me is that he will drive them out little by little. And I think the scripture easily could have said, if the Lord drives them out, it will be little by little, but it says he will. Um, and so I think that's something that I can rest in knowing that it may not be the timing that I think is the best. It may not be, you know, with the same speed that I think it should be at, but the Lord is at work. And I think every, he knows what's going on in our lives better than we know it. And I think um, the, the, I can rest assured that little by little, it's going to get better. I would uh, add to that for myself that um, what stands out for me is that we're, imp we're encouraged to remember that um, through the scripture that God delivered the people from Pharaoh's grip. So to remember that we have been delivered in the past, and I guess that's where I take that passage. And uh, what I want to uh, tell you and share with you is that three, as I was reflecting on what I wanted to say today, three times in my life, not only three, but three that came to my mind, were times when I really struggled because I didn't know what was to come. And they were serious things. They were uh, a time of infertility, a time of extended anxiety and hormonal depression, and also uh, extended back pain, sciatica, which actually lasted for about five years. Now, I can tell you today that that all worked out great, and God did reveal that to me and uh, healed me little by little. But in those moments, I can promise you, I had no idea how long it was going to last. Right. I could not see around the corner. And so I turn back to those times today because they are my memories of how God was faithful and did more than I could have asked for or imagined. Amen. Yeah, I also um, connected to the part where God says that this is what will happen and this is the direction we're moving in, but it'll be little by little. And I think in spiritual terms, in growth and in deliverance, it tends to move little by little and through routine um, habits. And so I was thinking about during the pandemic and before, when you're talking about health and growth, how much of that connects to your daily routines and habits. Um, last winter, so I don't like winter. I like December. December's great. Sparkly snow, Christmas lights, and then January and February and March are just stupid. <laughs> like, all the color just drains, and there's like nominal holidays that aren't even that fun, except Valentine's Day. Yep. And, um, Saving up already. <laughs> so, last winter, I would go to the grocery store and I'd get everything on my list and a house plant every time I went to the grocery store. Because I was like, oh, look, girl. coffee, I turn the fireplace on, and I don't feel any different or look any different after I read the scriptures, but that little by little growth um, has created health that has carried us through mm -hmm. some of the more challenging parts of this year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I, even as I was thinking about it, this passage is talking about in, in uh, verse 19, it's talking about how he ha you know, there was these wondrous signs from before. You saw God doing these incredible things, these miracles. And then is the Lord your God will do the same. Like God is going to do the, do the things he has done in the past again because God is faithful. And I think that's even part of it is us looking back to the faithfulness of him walking with us through our hard seasons. In the Verse 22, where it, where it says, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you little by little. So how are the ways that, that have been for you where you have grown little by little? Um, what does that look like for each of you guys? One thing that's happened for me, um, 
is that how I perceive the trials I go through, because how I perceive them has everything to do with how I'm going to experience them. Um, interestingly, in the Chinese language, the word for crisis has two characters, danger and opportunity. Hmm. Now, we all know about the danger, but how about the opportunity? Hmm. So I think one of the things God has put on my heart over the years is, Nancy, look for the opportunity in the crisis. Mm -hmm. How might I want to grow you in this season? Because there are some things that cannot be grown without a trial. And as a matter of fact, I, I can tell you from the work I do, most growth comes from a trial. Mm -hmm. And because most of us don't want to change if we can stay comfortable. We don't choose it, but God allows it in his mercy. So I've been learning to see that as God's loving kindness, not as a punishment. Uh, it's an opportunity, and he will never, ever leave us in the middle of that trial. Yeah, amen. Yeah, I think for me, it's... I've learned that God works in unorthodox ways in my life, you know. Um, so I'm currently a master's student, and, and when I was finishing up my undergrad, the last couple of years were a little bit challenging for me. I, I dealed with, or I dealt with some um, physical injuries. I tore my MCL, and then I was dealing with a groin injury, and I was a part of the men's basketball team, and and so sports were a big part of uh, my college experience, and it was something that was taken away from me for the last two years. Um, of my undergrad. And so during that time, you know, it had been something that I was praying for a lot was just for wisdom and discernment. I, you know, I was approaching, and I still am, um, a big crossroad in my life where I'm starting to grow up and get out on my own and, you know, starting to make decisions that are really going to affect me long term. And so um, I was just praying for your wisdom and discernment in those choices. And I, th I think God answered my prayer through the injury. And I think, you know, I was praying for it, hoping that I'll, I'll read Proverbs and something will jump out, and you know, and, and I'll be like, okay, I'm a lot more wise now. But um, so I was able to um, get a year of eligibility back, and I'll be able to play this year. But I was able to also start my master's, um, and through this master's program, um, it's been awesome and it's been a great learning experience for me. And I've been able to take away things and apply them to my life. That um, had I not got injured and just played my four years of undergrad and been done, I probably would have just jumped right into the workforce and probably have not started this. Um, and so for me, in the middle of it, I was angry, I was frustrated, I was, you know, struggling mentally dealing with stuff, and I wasn't seeing what God was doing. And I think um, that's the same for the season that we're in right now. It, it's tough to see what's good is coming out of COVID, all the social injustice that's going on, the climate of our country, our world, all the division. It's hard to see all that stuff. But I think for me, I, I know that God has worked like this in the past, that there will be a time when we can look back and, man, look how God worked through that in my life and the lives of other people's. Um, and so that's something that really is getting, helping me get through this time currently. Yeah, I think about the people who were listening to this and they had the difficulty and the danger in front of them and they wanted it to just give way. And that's what I've prayed for when something's been painful mm -hmm. and a challenge in my face. I pray for it to give way. Mm -hmm. and, um, and God was going to do it little by little. And when I think back to those things, I prayed that they would give way. We went through them slowly and received the greater treasure of, of understanding God better. Mm -hmm. Amen. So if you guys are uh, thinking about or looking at somebody right now who is really struggling in their faith. Maybe they are really struggling to connect to God. They, they want that, um, but it's, it's not happening for them. And they've tried a couple of things, but it's not working right now. They feel disconnected from God or from other believers or, or whatever, however they're feeling, it is not well in their soul. What would you say to somebody who's experiencing that right now, guys? Well, I think a lot of people are feeling that right now, that dryness in your soul and the lack of connection to God. Um, and I can really share on this point because since I was six years old, I've been a Bills fan. <laughs> and so I've developed uh, a real depth of long suffering. <laughs> if, you're, yeah, mm -hmm. if you're new to the Bills, this year is an anomaly. Don't get comfy. <laughs> we don't win much. But... The idea that, like, you know, I've given my loyalty and encouragement for basically nothing for, like, two decades. But we understand these ideas of hanging with your team or hanging with your marriage or hanging with your friendships because things go up and down, and, and we, we get that. 
And I think there's an aspect of, of that in faith, that you don't give up and you stay in the game and you keep trying to grow spiritually with or without a great emotional experience. Yeah, I, th I think one of the things, too, is being honest about where you are and where you're at. And I think with other people, with yourself, and most importantly, with God. And I think he's a God that we limit him by the amount of um, things that we hold back from him. Like, we d like he doesn't know that we're experiencing them. And so I think when you are spending that time with God, cry out in the most honest way. I mean, there's times, it's been for me where there's times... God, I'm mad at you right now. Like you, you have the power to help me with something and you're just watching me struggle with it. Right. And I think being open and being transparent about where you're at um, gives us the most opportunity to allow God to work um, in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll just share too. I think even for me, I was, I was feeling really spiritually dry uh, for like a month. And that's really hard, I will admit, when you're a pastor and you're trying to feed others, but you feel dry yourself. And I will say, even just to exactly what you were saying, Isaiah, I think one of the things that has helped me start to feel more connected to God was I literally was in a circle with our staff. And I just said, hey guys, like I'm, I'm struggling a little bit. And that was hard because I'm like, I'm, I'm supposed to be leading them. I'm supposed to be, you know, the example. And, um, but really even just uh, admitting that and saying that, and then even working out with Sarah, like, hey, what are some things like I and we can do different so that this isn't my experience? And, uh, you know, it, it was even one of the things that you said, Sarah, where it was just like, hey, let's get some consistency with your time with God. And the mornings aren't working for you because the kids are running around like crazy, so you can't connect there anymore um, in this season. So what can we do? And um, so found a spot at the, once the kids are in bed, where it's quiet by the fireplace and, and doing that. And I do Gatorade instead of uh, coffee, but, you know, to, to each his own. But, you know, I think that that has really helped me even over the last two weeks not feel like, oh, I'm just trudging through. I'm just running around getting these things done, but I don't feel like I'm being with God. And uh, that, that has really helped me. So both, I agree with both of what you were saying. I would only add to that um, two things. One is show up. Mm -hmm. It's better to show up regularly for one or two minutes than try to make a great hurrah mm. every month. Right. Because in relationships, and with God it is a relationship, we don't have any quality if we don't have quantity. And mm -hmm. I don't mean that by numbers of minutes, I mean by steadiness, just a little, little by little in our relationships. So that's one thing I would say. And then the other thing is, when I feel distant from God, it's most often because I am not in touch with what's going on in my own heart. I'm often distant from myself. Hmm. I'm distracted. I'm feeling feelings I don't want to deal with. Hmm. And so I would encourage people to just go to God and be like a sponge. Just soak. Soak up his goodness and be yourself, like hmm. Isaiah was saying. Hmm. Because if we, we should be able to share all that with God. And if we can't do that, if we're putting up those walls, then we're going to feel a distance there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So for you guys, you've already alluded to some of this, but what in your life took longer than you thought it would? What trial? And what values or, or things got clearer for you as a result of walking through that season? What, what, what took longer than you thought, and what did you learn from it? That's a good question. <laughs> should, should I just uh, pull no, the fine, audience? Or? It's fine. Um, <laughs> You know, after our daughter was born, after Nora was born, and I was sick for a while, and I was so frustrated. Anytime your body doesn't cooperate with what your mind and your heart want to do and what you want to be able to do for your kids or your job or your friends, it's so frustrating. And, um, and I remember praying, like, I just want to be better. I just want to be strong enough to do the things that I'm supposed to do. And instead, I got a sense that, um, that God was with me in my pain, which sounds really not helpful, but it was incredibly helpful because nothing's worse than being alone. Mm. Um, and I knew leaving that, that God was with me. I had another friend who told me once that she prayed for a miracle and she didn't get the one she prayed for. The miracle she got instead was that she felt hope again. 
-hmm. Yeah, I think developing good spiritual habits has been, it's been a journey for me. There's, you know, especially during this time, um, during the pandemic, I've, I've tried to be intentional about growing in a few different areas, you know, and one of them being wisdom and discernment and one just growing spiritually. And so uh, it's easy for me to have devotions in the morning, but one of the things I do is um, like a recap of my day where I'll write out, you know, in my journal of opportunities I had to grow spiritually. Did I, you know, exercise discernment? Was I spending time with God today? Um, and so that's been a challenge to stick with it and be mm. consistent because mm -hmm. I think it's, I, I don't know if anybody can relate, but I'm the first couple of days, oh yeah, let's go, I'm good. <laughs> and then, you know, life happens and you don't get home until 11 o'clock one night and it's been a long day for you and then it's, I'm not doing that today, yeah. you know? And so that's what it's been for me. Um, and the other thing is carving out time to listen um, mm. where I'm just sitting in silence and allowing God to speak. I think I tend to, you know, have a one-sided relationship with God where I can, ask him for all these things, tell him how awesome he is, and then, all right, let's go do something else, um, where I don't give him time to speak back to me, um, which, like Nancy was talking about, it's a two-way relationship, you know, where I'm speaking to him, I got to allow him to speak to me um, if I want to grow in certain areas, so just staying consistent in, in silencing myself at times has been, has been a challenge. Yeah, absolutely. I think that I've learned a type of prayer that's more helpful for me, although it's not intuitively what I would want to do. Intuitively, when I go to God and I'm struggling and, you know, over long periods, like I shared earlier, that did not immediately resolve, I want to go to God and start with those problems. And I don't think he minds that. He'll take any time with us that we give him and spend with him. But what I've learned for me is that um, it helps to start with praising God for his attributes. And I don't mean thanking him, I mean praising him for things like, God, you're so faithful, you're ever present, mm. you're merciful, you're kind, you're always there, you never fail us, those kind of things. And what I've learned is it's almost like, I was thinking about it looking at the Christmas tree today, that's the star on the tree. And you start at the top and you work your way down and it sets everything in alignment it focuses and forms the way things really are. God is at the top. He's on the throne. He's, he has dominion over all. And I, he cares. So that really helps me because then I start my prayer that way. And then everything else sort of feel, I feel like a, a breath. Like, okay, the, the universe is in God's hand. I don't have to worry. So that is, that's something that's really helped. Even though when I'm in the throes of it, sometimes I have to push myself to do that. Yeah. And if you're um, looking practically about this, like, you know, the Bible reading and the prayer time, a resource that I often recommend to people is the website or the free app, She Reads Truth and He Reads Truth. They have Bible reading plans that if you're kind of new to this, um, to a lot of them are free and they'll give you daily scripture readings and it's, it's a beautiful website, it's easy to navigate, and then there's additional devotional readings if you want that, but that's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. I wanted to add one other thing, and sometimes, this is another thing that I had to realize, and I still have to remind myself of in prayer, is sometimes we go to God and we're in a really cruddy place, and we pray and we say, God, nothing happened, this didn't work. Well, don't give up on it because your prayer might you know, sort of steep throughout the day. And I bet by the end of the day, you will have seen the movement of God. It may not be immediate. It probably won't always be. Right. So like, but God will be working throughout your day and you may see a shift inside yourself. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, absolutely. And I think, I think you guys are right on. And I think <laughs> this passage is so helpful in us thinking God can at any moment perform an amazing miracle. And we pray for that and we believe in that because we've seen that. But also, oftentimes the way he grows us is not through the immediate miraculous. It is often little by little that he does his work within us. Amen, church? Amen. Hey, church, can you say thank you to these awesome panelists and their great wisdom that they shared with us today? So thankful for you guys for being willing to do this. This is great.